Beyond. 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 And it's episode 525, the first episode of 2018. And the last. Yeah, that's it. That's the end of Beyond for 2018. <laughs> it's great it's having a you. Good Bye. year. We had a good run. It was a whole two and a half days. <laughs> My name is Max Scoville, and I'm joined today by Alana Pierce. Hi. Zach Ryan. Hello. I had a brain fart. Uh, <laughs> Are you guys mad at each other? <laughs> the year is turning. Did you forget about Marty thing? Sleva? Hi, welcome. Um, yeah, it's a fun fact about about Zach's. Um, mm. My my last producer was named Zach mm-hmm. Minor, and he now works over at PlayStation. Uh, this is actually like a weird. We had we were at PSX a couple weeks ago. Uh, he was one of the guys who was in charge of of organizing that whole big live stage show we did. Oh yeah, and it was weird to be like I, I was hanging out with. Dudes named Zach who do video organize stuff. Organize live shows? So, organize big, li- important You know things, how yeah. like, a lot of people say that there's names that you can give to people that define the, their profession? Yeah, like once. Henry. Yeah, or like how some you know, some people, like you, if you're born with a name like Chaz, you're probably just like destined to be a stripper. All Zachs are producers. Yeah? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Was Makes it, sense. Was legally it, obligated. Yeah. Wasn't Chucky but, Finster's dad named Chaz? Chaz Studebaker. Yeah. Yeah. So he may have been a stripper. Yes. Definitely. He was pretty depressed. He was definitely a sexual deviant. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Old yeah. Chucky, I've got to count all these 50s I got. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, yeah, we've got a very slow news week today because a lot of people are still on vacation. It's the beginning of the year. Um, but we figured this would be a good chance to kind of talk about what our you know, 2018 expectations and more importantly, what is our 2018 video game resolution? Man. Do not say 4K or 1080p yeah. or any that that resolution joke. We were Frame talking, rates. We yeah. were talking about a hundred a video that was in a, a game that it was in 120 FPS today, and it gave me an anxiety attack. <laughs> that sounds upsetting. <laughs> it was a MOBA that you could play on your phone, but only like three phones can handle 120 FPS. That's just so much happening. Who thought that was a good I idea? I don't know. It's it's really like when you just t- tape three iPhone X's together, and then you have 120 <laughs> frames per second. I really don't like it. I don't like it at all. Uh, so, what are you guys' is like video game? Res- Resolutions for 2018. I think the obvious one is sort of the backlog, obviously. Yeah. Just- I feel like 2017, more than any year prior, I feel like I did a really good job of keeping up on stuff. I think I played more games in 2017 than I had in the last couple of years before that. Yeah, you gave me like tremendous amounts of anxiety because you're always you always playing the games. I was just, but I was just like keeping up on stuff. Like, and I, I finished Horizon right before Zelda came out, and I felt good about that. And I finished Zelda quickly, and I felt well, I still haven't finished Zelda. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah, you're a liar. Yeah. No, well, I, I did well, so everything. quickly. Makes... You've been playing it for like the entire year. Well, I'm done. Close he's, t- he's talking about Horizon, the only game that matters on the PlayStation show. No, that's not true. So I he finished did Persona. Uh, I think I will say that you were really good about uh, getting through a lot of stuff this year. And mm-hmm. I was always like, like Max said, I was always kind of surprised when you're like, "Yeah, I already played that." I was like, yeah. "What? When?" Yeah. yeah. Uh, my thing this year is uh, not to sleep on smaller games. Uh, last year I did play Edith Finch uh, that I really loved, um, but I, listening back to or going back to our best of. Uh, lists. I, I miss things like Pyre. I didn't play Pyre, which is a bummer. I didn't play... Uh, Nightmares lost you. Yeah, Little Nightmares. Yeah, I, little really nightmares. I didn't play Night in the Woods. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the three games that are just universally beloved and praised, and I just totally slept on them. So I think this year, along with my backlog, uh, I want to make sure that, that I'm giving ample time or equal time to bigger games and smaller games that people are really yeah, enjoying. So. I, th- I think we're trying to do a better job. Like Miranda and Chloe have sort of been trying to, to launch a way for us to make sure that everyone, at least most of the people on IGN, uh, on the staff are caught up every couple months on the big stuff. So it's not like all well, at the end of the year, only five of us played near. So when people are talking about best story or best music, uh, there's only a couple people talking about near, whereas the entire office played Mario. So it's sort yeah. of, you know, a little bit slanted. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm so pissed. I like, I completely slept on near. Like yeah. I completely didn't. I didn't touch it, you know. And it's like there was I, like a copy floating around, but I kept being like, "I'll get to that." And like that and Wolfenstein Two are the big ones that I just didn't. I didn't really get any, any time. Those are like my two and three. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like both yeah. incredible. I yeah. played the first couple hours of near and absolutely loved it, and have had it on uh, in the back of my head to go back and and finish it, and I just haven't been. I able don't to even do it. think the first couple of hours are very good. <laughs> Yeah. For the idea that you're like, I played the first couple of hours and loved it and didn't keep playing is insane. It gets so much better. Mm. So I've heard. Very good game. Yeah. Uh, Mostly from you, I've heard that. So. Yeah, I probably said that quite a few yeah. times to you. Um, I want to finish Persona 5 because I started playing that finally. So I want to finish that. But other than that, I actually want to play more multiplayer games this year. Like I played a bit of PUBG, but I want to get back into Rainbow Six Siege and like mm. online services that I feel like, you know, these games that keep being updated that I'm like, oh, well, I played it on launch, but I haven't picked it up since. And I want to do more of that. You played that on stuff. PS4 or Xbox? 
uh, Siege. Yeah. I have accounts on both, actually. Okay. Yeah. I was actually, somebody just asked me about that and if, like, if I'd played it. And that's a game I'm really curious about. Because it's, it's so like, I love the idea of these like little kind of claustrophobic, almost just these mini matches. Well, and matches know? are super quick. Yeah. So They're like also totally just not very intense and mm -hmm. easy for you to pick up and put down. But like, I'd like to put more time into Overwatch because I didn't play a ton of it in 2017 or even like GTA Online. I want to mm. play more online games like interspersed between the single player experiences. But I mean, it, yeah, it sucks because like we, we typically cover games leading up to launch and then at launch and that's not how games work anymore. Right. Uh, I mean like- Siege at, especially. Yeah. It just keeps being updated and made better and it's it's very impressive and every time I go back to it, I'm like, wow, this is good, but I never stay back in it and, and I it's just want to make sure I do that. It's insane that we got like a, a whole entire new thing for, for GTA that's like, hey, it's James Bond stuff. It's yeah. like yeah. Dr. Evil Secret Lair and you're like- yeah. I, I, last time I played that, I like bought like a crappy like beachside apartment or something. Yeah. I'm so yeah. interested in how GTA Online is going to continue once Red Dead's out, which I don't think Red Dead's gonna be out till the fall. Um, but like, and if Red Dead's gonna launch with Red Dead Online, because mm. obviously GTA Online, like GTA launched without online. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it's almost <laughs> the same system for launch because I know part of it was that they wanted to make sure that everyone knew the mechanics before going into online so it wasn't just a mess and you yeah. had to play that tutorial mission before you could even go online. Yeah. So I can imagine them doing that like week or two week lead in but it would be insane for them to not continue supporting GTA Online when it has more players right now than it's ever had before and they're making $500 million off of shark cards. You know, yeah. it just, they have to keep supporting it um, even. And I don't I don't think that Red Dead will eclipse it either. I feel like that they're probably different enough. Like maybe no. some people will split off, but- A lot of people really GTA GTA. hate games with horses and they it's only true. like the cars. But yeah. the idea of like, the idea of taking the GTA model of heists and putting it in a Wild West <sighs> setting is so much more appealing to me than the stuff that you do in GTA 5. Like I dabbled with, with online um, back at launch in 2013, uh, but the idea of like jumping online with the four of you guys and trying to rob a train while it's on, on the move oh, or man. something yeah. and coordinating that is but, so much more exciting. Than you know what we can't do? Play tennis. You could do you could do Wild West tennis. No, you played, it with, exist. you played it with pine cones back then. So yeah, right. was the ball the pine cone? Yes, obviously. Yeah. And the stick was the pine. It was, cone. Yes. It was incredibly frowned upon. It was just uh, juggling. And people would be shot on sight <laughs> for playing tennis. Oh no, was, uh, yeah. uh, that's how Wild Bill Hickok died. Yeah, yeah. The tennis. Accent. But I loved playing like Liar's Dice and stuff yeah. like that in Red Dead, and it would be cool to be able to do that online. I want to like, play yeah. like, like a, Snake in my boot. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, what? Snake in my boot. No. Yeah, there was like an no. old. Yeah. Snake in no, 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 no. Snake in the boot. <laughs> You're not playing that. No, I, it's not a game. I think Snake in the Boot's You're a game. You're not playing Snake in the Boot. <laughs> Why I know not? they had the one where you <laughs> had to throw the whole shoe. Poison the water hole. <laughs> <laughs> in in line Lies with what you, really good. In line with what you were saying, I think that one of the things that I also want to do this year is is uh, play games that sort of take me out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. uh, you and I had talked about playing Monster Hunter. Uh, I'm definitely World going to do that. Let's do and that so, like, together. Yeah. That's something that like a playing more online, playing more cooperative games, uh, also like playing more with the communities that I'm involved in. So right. like reaching out to the beyond community, reaching out to the NVC groups and being like, who's playing this, who wants to jump on, you yeah. know, like we did a couple of uh, Mario Kart cups and we did a couple of Splatoon things over the break. And it's just a lot of fun to get into a room with 30 people that you yeah, know. I, like, yeah. Okay, great, let's pair up yeah. and Destiny go was the only online game yeah. I got into this year. Yeah. yeah. I, I still like chipped yeah. away at playing Battlefield 1. Like I got the season yeah. pass for that and I love that game. And I was like, what did I play this year? And that was like, that was my fun game. That was yep. a game that I was just playing for the hell of it and because I enjoyed it. And I I mean, that's, you know, we've talked about this, but the sort of the bittersweet thing of trying to like cover every game as it comes out mm -hmm. is that there's this sense of like, no matter what you're, what you're playing, you're not playing something else sure. and you're missing out on something else. But it's also kind of cool to be like, oh, like all the initial hype kind of died down and the only people playing this game are the ones who legitimately care about right. it. Right. That's cool. That's really fun. Yeah. Um, what, uh, what, 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 like, gun to your head, what's the one game you're excited for most this year? Spider Man. I think mine's Spider Man. I'm with Red Dead. That's Red what, Dead's the very close. It's, it's one of the two. The only reason I say no to Red Dead is, like, I think the, the delays, like, kind of faded me a bit. Like, mm -hmm. I think because it was delayed and we don't have a release date, that I've kind of been like, I'm less excited. But. I mean, we haven't even seen gameplay though. Like, that's what's so cool yeah. is that like, I, I love that they, that they keep that. I mean, exactly. They keep it so under wraps. Like if you told me that like Insomniac was doing a Spider-Man game and they were like, here's what, like a, here's like a little sizzle reel for it. I'd be like, that looks very nice and I would love to play it when it comes out. But the fact that there's sort of been, you know, stringing us along with little bits of, of inside information and like, 
I, I, I know the actual experience will be good, but I can already feel myself getting that kind of hype fatigue where I've been excited about it for too long and I'm like kind of almost almost yeah. as like self-preservation kind of backing away from I it. I don't feel that way about Spider-Man at all, but I did start to feel that way at the very end of the marketing cycle for Horizon Zero Dawn because I felt like we were seeing so many similar things. Mm -hmm. We were seeing so many similar fights and environments that I was like, okay, you need to just give me this game. Oh, yeah. Spider-Man, I'm still like, just yeah. get all, I want to play all of this. No, I mean, that we walk a kind of a weird line here because you, you do have we do have to cover stuff as it's being announced and like new new things that we're excited for but at the same time to kind of back off from something and be like alright I'm sold I'll come back when it's ready you know I did that with mm -hmm. Horizon and I watched the E3 demo and I was like holy crap and then I came back to it and I was like yep that does what it said it would do yeah, and, yeah. you know yeah. I mean incidentally I wasn't really into the game but it's I, incredible I think mine's God of War uh, yeah, as somebody who historically hasn't been a huge God of War fan, this one looks like it's doing something like really different, oh, really yeah. unique and I'm just excited to see uh, I'm excited to see the way they tackle what ostensibly could be like a really amazing, yeah. amazingly told story. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm leaving off things that I don't think are coming out this year. Like I don't think the last of us or death stranding or kingdom hearts or final fantasy remake are coming out this year. Not or a chance. Cyberpunk not or, so no. Yeah. No. Yeah. I'd love uh, to get some updates on cyberpunk though. Well, we do have a big, uh, <laughs> just anything yeah, just say yeah. something. We do have a big list of confirmed release dates for the first quarter mm -hmm. of 2018. So I figured we could just run through those really quick. Uh, on January 23rd, we're getting the Inpatient and Lost Sphere. Yeah. Uh, so Inpatient's the uh, PSVR that's the prequel to Until Dawn, set sort of in that that sanatorium. sanatorium. And you and I have both played that. Yeah, uh, the demo. I, I played it at PAX West, yeah. I believe. Um, the demo I played was very jump scary. Me too. Um, and it almost looks cliche. The environment yeah. look super different. But you need to see more. I think that's probably a hot thing. I think do. I played a chunk of it at PSX that was like I from the. PSX. Was that one? Was it the same demo or yes. was it like where you were was sort it, of being like wheeled around? In were a, you in the in the press area? The one that one. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The game um, set in the press area. I wasn't. No, someone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ah, it was haunting. <laughs> um, no, but I wasn't being wheeled around in the mine, so I don't know what. Oh. Is that the same thing? Maybe, or? maybe it was a different demo. Uh, no, I was in a wheelchair. Yeah. But maybe no, I mean, they had multiple demos. Yeah, the demo I saw, like, you you were in your room and you were walking around and checking stuff out and they kept bringing bologna sandwiches and you can eat them. You do that thing Ooh, where you, you pick I up bologna, bologna sandwiches. That. Yeah, so, like, that's what I'm saying is I think that there's a lot more kind of, that they're, like, early demos are frequently very stripped down. <laughs> yeah. True. Uh, I don't, again, I, I think the setting is, um, I kind of hate, I kind of hate mental mental hospital settings. It's right. a little rote. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I've I've I was hospitalized as a kid for depression and it sucks and it's terrifying but completely in a different way from every, you know, every horror trope mental hospital and it just is one of those like just get it right or just don't try, you know? Yeah. yeah. And I well, get that it's sort of old-timey Victorian state well, hospital. And right? I appreciated so much that the original Until Dawn was going on like cliches and tropes, but cliches and tropes of the genre that games haven't really delved into. Yeah. Like there's so few games that do feel like a, a 80s teen slasher movie and so like until Dawn feeling like that, I thought was really cool. Yeah, in a cabin in the woods kind of way. Yeah, yeah, totally. But yeah, it's hard to say if the if Inpatient is going to capture that, I also or, even just, if it's trying. I, to I just it. want them to do a non PSVR game that's like Until Dawn, either in that mm. same genre or maybe a different genre of horror. Like I, I'd love another well, horror game that is like that, but just in a different setting. Yeah, mm. it can do more of those. Yeah, kind of I mean, I will say that the mechanics of the Inpatient, from what I saw, were like really really stable. Like it felt like they finally, the, all those different kind of variables of, of using move controllers and the VR headset to look at stuff and all the ways you can go about interacting with a game that felt the most like picking it up and just suddenly know what I, knowing what I was doing. I think you can also play it with DualShock just with yeah. DualShock. Yeah. So you, you have both options, which mm -hmm. I think is important. You can, um, you can use voice too. Like there's a thing, yeah. When when the the uh, someone comes up to you and talks to you and there's the sort of the two different you know dialogue options, you can just say like. You just dictate. You're like, I don't know how I feel about that. And then your character like, Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, which is using the onboard mic, which is <laughs> that really, is cool. Really neat. That's gonna be funny um, for like anyone you've lived with who's just like, what's wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, also they have like the probably the grossest um like uh like skin skin color uh selector I've seen. Like the col the color the character creator, you can pick like, you know, male, female. Uh and then it shows like There's a character? Really? Yeah. The, like what color are your hands gonna be? Are they going to be man hands or lady hands? Ooh, I think it also determines. I think it also determines what uh, what gender your roommate is. Um, but like, mm. it's the the way you pick the skin color. Normally, it's like, oh, it's like a, just like a nice kind of like makeup palette, like a bunch of swatches. In this case, it is like looking at your your hand through like a magnifying glass like when it's just really gross, huh, and you're gross. like, oh, cool pores and hair. I don't need to see that. <laughs> that yeah. seems just, on brand for a horror game. Yeah. Though. That seems yeah. good. It's kind of it's wonderfully like medical. It kind of yeah. it fits the setting. Huh. Um, anyway, also out that day is Lost Sphere. Yeah, that's yeah, the. 
this uh, Tokyo RPG Factory's yep. new game, uh, the guys behind I'm Setsuna, uh, they're kind of an offshoot of uh, Square Enix. Um, and this game was announced a little later last year yep. and has kind of come together like, we saw it right before E3, I guess. Yeah, and we had it on our live show. Yeah, yeah, and it's come together, I feel like, really quickly. Uh -huh. And these guys do a really great job. I don't know if anybody here played Setsuna, but it, it's a, that game specifically was uh, uh, meant to feel like Sort of, yeah, like sort of a, a, a tribute to Chrono Trigger. I play, it's on Switch, right? Yeah. I played it on Switch. And uh, they really nailed that feel. And this one is, I feel like they're going for more of like a Secret of Mana vibe. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. And uh, that game was set primarily in the winter. This game is set primarily yeah, in... Spring? Maybe? I forget. Oh, yeah. They're doing yeah. a season thing. But yeah. it's like, a, it's a second season. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's like a spiritual successor to that game, which was a great 16-bit feel oh. RPG, but with like really My beautiful 3D one. graphics. So I was excited for this, and then all of a sudden, in that one Nintendo Direct, we saw Project Octopath Traveler, yeah. and then that demo got released, and yeah. I was like, well, this is... I'm just Octopath Traveler seems to be doing the same sort of thing, but in a more innovative way, whereas sure. these games are like straight up like 16-bit turn-based RPG clones. Be. Yeah. Like, Octopath Traveler is taking that formula and like twisting it in and a really interesting bring, way. It's like in a, through a 2018 lens. Yeah, yeah, but that's not to say that these games aren't great in their own right, because I do feel like Setsuna scratched an itch for me that I... I it's... It, feels like a 16-bit RPG, yeah. and I feel like Lost Sphere is much the same way. Mm -hmm. So They're yeah. just intentionally retro. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Uh, on the 26th, we're getting Dragon Ball Fighters, which is going to be awesome. Uh, that is, of course, the Arc System Works, the guys who do Blaz Blue. Blaz, Blaz, Blaz Blue. Blaz Blue. Yeah. Is it Blaz really Blue. Blaz Blue? I believe it's Blaz Blue. I think it's Blaz Blue, yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is this is 3v3, uh, kind of cel-shaded look, Dragon Ball Fighter, Dragon Ball Z fighting game, which I, I'm so it's excited. Incredible. It yeah. looks so stupidly good. It's ridiculous. Like, like, um, in motion. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so I did a demo of this at E3. I don't know if I talked about it on here or not, but um, we were doing the demo and we're kind of talking through it and someone's you know playing off stage. And you know at that point, it was very early build and it's like, they're not going to show us the whole roster. They're not going to reveal everything i'm asking kind of like very sort of like you know fluffy softball questions like you do just to kind of be like show the game off like tell us more about this and uh and then i'm like is that i'm seeing a lot of a lot of environmental damage here and it's like the end of the match and someone's playing as, as frieza and as i'm saying this frieza jumps into space and shoots an energy ball at the earth and blows it up. And I was like, oh yeah, there's environmental damage down to destroying the entire planet. <laughs> you did a fatality on earth. Yeah. Classic Frieza. That and does I'm seem just, like a that is like, yeah. I'm like so happy that yeah. we're getting that properly in a, yeah. a DBZ game. Hey, what um, about this though? Piccolo? I don't know anything about Dragon Ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's green. He's right. a Namekian. Yeah, he is. He is a Namekian. I'm already. Yeah. Um, no, that's Good gonna job. be that game's gonna be great. I hope they just I hope they keep in your force. I hope we get like a just an endless stream of DLC, and I hope they go into like the just the most D list like get like, like Mr. Satan burner. in there. Hell yeah, dude! They yeah. gotta put Mr. Get, Satan. Yeah, in where's there. that Yamcha? Yamcha's in I there. Want Yamcha Yamcha's in there. Yamcha's yeah. in there. Yeah. Yamcha's a support for TN. So I've liked most of the Dragon Ball fighting games that I've played, but the problem is that I couldn't tell you what the names of them were because oh, it's just a grab bag of yeah. So I'm like, I've played three, I think. Yeah, well, I don't know what they were from Budokai forward. They had this weird kind of like 3D fighting scenario thing, and it was like. Well, I've done that. Like, that was one of those with the character yeah. creator, which is actually pretty cool. You can make yeah. that. that was, I think that was the last Xenoverse, one. I was like, I yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah, cool. there was Xenoverse 2. Oh, yeah. Was it, yeah, Xenoverse 2 was the one with the character creator, yeah. 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 But that yeah. weird kind of like trying to fly and fight in 3D is just, it's, I feel like it was never the best idea. And they kind of clung to that. It felt like, to me just, like those virtual on games, like those mech one on one mech yeah. fighting yeah. games where I'm like, yeah. I, I'm not feeling this. Yeah. You know? No, I mean, it's exciting that they're just doing like, hey, it's a straight like 2D fighting game. It's mm -hmm. going to be awesome. Looks super cool. Uh, also coming out that day, big day, uh, Monster Hunter World. Yep. Yeah. Very uh, excited. The more and more I see this game, the more I'm excited for it. Uh, I, I completely missed the beta because we were at uh, PSX, I think. I believe there's and a. Oh, there was a second beta. I think we missed The it. second beta was over Christmas Eve cool. or Christmas weekend. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, whatever, we're three weeks away. Where so what is, I was what is at this home game about? about it. It's where the internet doesn't exist. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, it's, it's really interesting that they're bringing this game to the PlayStation 4 as like their flagship Monster Hunter game because Monster Hunter has primarily thrived on handhelds in the mm -hmm. past. This game isn't coming to Vita. It's not coming to 3DS. It's not coming to Switch. This is a PlayStation game. So I think Capcom... Uh, the the idea that they have two betas, the idea that there's this huge marketing push right now is, I think they're a little bit worried about this game, A, not performing as well as other Monster Hunter games because it's not on a handheld platform. It is a very handheld friendly game. Sure. Yeah, and B, from what I've heard, this game is not super forgiving in terms of learning curve if you're new to the franchise, which is a little bit, like, I've tried so many times to get into the Monster Hunter mm -hmm. series, and each time it's been like, I have no idea what's going on, and this game does not do a great job I mean, of like the previous games have been a 
tutorial. bit like that. You kind of yeah. need someone to play it with. But I'm mostly excited about this because I know more people who regularly play PS4s than I ever did with True. DS. So sure. it's like more of my friends are going to be playing this. Yeah, yeah our very own Casey DeFridis has offered... I, I, a ton of us in the office, like, hey, let me know if you're going to jump online and play yeah. when it's out, and I'll walk you through it. Which I thought, yeah, I was, yeah that's rude. I thought that was disrespectful. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine she'll probably be the one. Casey who free it, to so. play. Yeah. <laughs> um, out one thirty, we're getting uh, Dissidia Final Fantasy NT. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah, that's the follow. <laughs> yep. It's a follow up to Dissidia Final Fantasy ninety eight special edition, yeah. and uh, coming up uh, next year, we're going to get Dissidia Final Fantasy XP. Yeah. Mm. Uh, talk about games God, with the talk about really games good. with the learning curve. That was curve. Windows jokes. Yeah, yeah, that was good. <laughs> talk about games with the learning curve. Dissidia Final Fantasy just looks. When we so tried to play that game in Japanese at an arcade, sort of drunk, that was not great. Yeah, <laughs> we, shocking. Yeah. Weird. That didn't work great. Wow. One, two, three. Yep. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it, it, it is a, that is a fighting ass fighting game. And it's like, speaking of like flying around in 3D and just like, it's crazy what yep. that game looks like in motion. And um, it, the fan service is like through the roof. Like there's tons of like awesome throwback characters. And uh, I, I've never been a guy. We have Uber different definitions. Well, fan, I service. fan service. You could yeah, punch but I, Prompto hard enough that all of his clothes fly off. Yeah. I wasn't talking about you. boobs. <laughs> Well, do fans love tons of fan service and it's incredible. I just meant fan service <laughs> in the way of like fans hey, of the genre. Would be like, great. Yeah. Fans of the genre are going to love memories. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I didn't ever, I've never heard of fan service as a boob thing. That's not an anime it's thing. Absolutely. It is. It started as a sexual. You know what a like a like the bathhouse thing? Uh, the bathhouse. I've been episodes? to bathhouses. Yeah. Okay. Shocker. I didn't even know that. <laughs> I've never been to a bathhouse. <laughs> could, you, could you kick you out for clogging all the anyway, drains so in your what hair? Comes out on, <laughs> what comes out in February, Max? All right. Uh, on the sixth of February, we're getting Shadow of the Colossus. Oh, speaking of hairy beasts, <laughs> this is this is yeah nice. Uh, Good. This is the best looking game I think I've ever seen in action. <laughs> it's uh, it's pretty amazing. Uh, yeah. I kept we were kept like. You know, talking to people at PSX, and it would be like on a TV in the background, and I would just do this, like, and I would just start staring at it, and I'm, yeah. I can't, I can't figure out what exactly it is that looks so great. The, the scale, yeah. I mean, I don't think that it looks that great. Like, I wouldn't say it looks better than Horizon, which I think is a gorgeous game, so but I it's think, it's yeah. more impressive because I, it's like whoa. It looks realistic in a way yeah. Horizon doesn't. Like Horizon looks like a like a it looks like a video game. It looks like a gorgeous video game, but this looks there's something about like the grass in Shadow of the Colossus looks it's, like it's true. It grass looks like a, and the hair it looks and the like real yeah. crappy like, grass. Yeah. Are you like, talking yeah. about in the original? No, in the new one. Like it's uh -huh. it's it just it it looks real. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Like the, the sky boxes look like actual sky, not like idealized cool video game weather system yeah. sky or like, Oh, this grass is very impressive. It moves around more like, Oh, this turf looks like beat to hell because no one's taking care of it because right. monsters yeah. are walking all over it. Yeah. yeah. We had an opportunity to play through a couple of the Colossi at PSX and, uh, yeah, graphically stunning. Uh, Brian and I did a conversation on this that you can find online, but it, the game itself still feels exactly the same, which is good and bad. Yeah, exactly. Like, nostalgic for sure but also like that game is definitely a 2005 game yeah. with a fresh coat of paint yeah, so more grundles, I'll, though. I'll be there are yeah. several more grundles yeah, yeah. every but, every creature has a grundle uh, yeah. I, I'll be curious to see what what people that didn't get an opportunity to play this game upon initial release what their impression is playing this game now because I think the camera is is oh, tough. it's butt. Yeah, yeah. That camera, that camera is Grundle for it's sure. It's fewer butt. Yeah. Yeah. It's fewer I mean, butt than the original, but it's still butt. How's the butt. the frame rate's pretty good on this? Pretty frame rate's great. Oh, yeah. okay. yeah. Frame rate's yeah. great. So I think that that'll and be. That'll and I'm excited to play it with the new updated controls. I haven't got to do that yet. But the updated so. controls, like that's one of the things that I feel like they really touted. Like, oh, we've changed the control scheme, and in our minds, we're like, great, that control scheme was bad. But now what that means is instead of pressing triangle to grip, you just press R2, and instead of like it's it's just button mapping. It's not necessarily like different physics. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah. right. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, I've I screwed around with the was it the, the HD collection when yeah, it came out? Yeah, PS3. And I think they had updated controls for that, sort of. And mm. I played with that, but I didn't. I didn't. You know, go through the whole thing. So let, let, let me just say, like, I'm being harsh on it, but I, this is one of my favorite games of all time, yeah. and I will absolutely be playing it day one. Same. Cool. On uh, February 13th, we're getting Owlboy, which was uh, <laughs> oh. fun little uh, like PC platformer, Very Metroidvania, game. darling. Yeah, Chloe yeah. loved it. Uh, Secret of Mana is getting oh. the HD remaster. This is getting a physical release. I just saw. Mm -hmm. uh, Holy crap! I'm excited about this. I just like this is one of those games that I, I I was never like primarily a Secret of Mana kid. Like I always really loved Link to the Past and Secret of Evermore, which was like the American kind yeah. of bastardized version of Secret of Mana. Yeah, very nice dog. Um, but I still have like fond memories of just that that whole like fun little beginning area with all the rabbits, rabbites, not rabbits, rabbis, rabbites, oh, rabbites, rabbits, 
Rabbi. Yeah. Rabbi. No, it's one of the first enemies you fight is a rabbi. Mario um, and rabbis. <laughs> if you, <laughs> if you uh, <laughs> Mario and rab- rabbis. <laughs> I'm playing a lot of that over Christmas break. It was weird. Uh, all right. Oh, um, I'd play that. Yeah. Uh, if you go back to the E3 episode we did, I don't know, two years ago, three years ago, uh, Crossing Souls is a game I couldn't shop awesome. about. Yeah. This is if, so cool. If there was an 80s Saturday morning cartoon of Stranger Things, and they made a 16-bit RPG based on it. Yep. That's basically what this is, yep. but it's just... Uh, it's That's really legitimately cool. like the most perfect description. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's got all that... Like, I'm very fussy about like the kind of the 80s nostalgia angle, um, but this is like... It's kind of like a group of Burger King Kids Club-esque kids hanging out, and, and one of their friends is a ghost. And he, there's a bunch of weird stuff going down in your, in your town, and it's got uh, hand-drawn animated cutscenes. Yeah, it looks cool. gorgeous. I'm mm-hmm. so excited. It's it's made by like a super small team of I think uh, Spanish developers. Yep, uh, that'll be really cool. Um, Kingdom Come Deliverance is that that one that's like Battlefield but with medieval stuff? It's like super realistic, realistic. Medi- medieval stuff. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, I've been. I think I previewed this in like 2014 yeah, maybe like Jared was it's been coming for a long time yeah. Yeah, yeah I actually think it's Kingdom coming probably going to be surprisingly popular I yes. imagine this yeah. is a game that like really blows up the it's coverage on this, that has done really yeah, well for us it's really oh, funny really? because yeah. we've booked it on we've booked it on our live shows the last you know couple of years and each time it's one of those things where it's like uh, we have a slot these guys want on like sure let's throw them a bone and then every time it does like 300,000 views and it's like mm-hmm. oh right I forgot that this game is like I got this subculture of people that are like super stoked to play it um um, my favorite story about this game was they were on our e- no Gamescom live show and they were talking about how realistic the combat is the super just incredibly realistic combat and as the guy was saying it <laughs> the character that he was controlling shoots another guy in the head with an arrow and the guy falls over but then gets back up with the arrow sticking straight <laughs> up his head and I was like oh well close enough no. yeah well that guy would go on to rule a uh, part of Europe and he would be a famous aristocrat <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Jimmy Feathercap. Um, <laughs> February 20th, we're getting a game that people will be very angry at, regardless of how good it is or not, and that is Metal Gear Survive. Pass. I'm morbid curiosity <sighs> play. I'm going to play it. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, yep. worth noting, this is uh, this is being, this is being like overseen by uh, one of the guys who worked on the last like four Metal Gear games. Like he's been, yep. he's been work. He was tight with Kojima Johnny Sasaki. For- <laughs> Um, it's, but it's, it's like, it's a dude who, I think he was the, one of the main guys on Revengeance. Mm-hmm. And on, okay. Revengeance was a pretty good game. It was a good game. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think this good game soundtrack. has a ton of potential. It's going to be, it's going to have Konami microtransactions. It's going to have Konami branding on it. It's not going to say Hideo Kojima anywhere in the game. People are going to get pissed off at it, but like the actual game itself, I think it's going to be kind of a battlefront two situation where if you say anything remotely positive about it, you get torn apart in all the comments sections. So let us never speak of this game again. Also, Pass. I miss left the dead. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, if this if this game has a battle royale mode, ooh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, we'll talk to that future of ten games this year. They're gonna Fox have battle royale. Yeah. battle royale. It sounds kind of great. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, and then sometime in February we're getting Moss, Yay. which is the uh, PSVR game about mice. Mm-hmm. It's adorable. I'm There's actually a demo like, out for that. Like yeah, mouse. It's, feels like Red Wall. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. I yeah. like it a lot because I think it's it has done a good job of feeling like a VR game more so than a lot of others I played in terms of there are two con- control schemes. There is you playing as the mouse and then you playing as this like spirit beast that you are. So there are these two separate systems that you have to remember like a dual shot controller and then there's the motion for when you're playing as the spirit and you mm. have to like constantly swap between those two things and it makes you look at every environment in a way of like wait which of these two should I play this yeah. as and it's it's That's really cool. cool. It's very smart. Yeah. Nice. Also great combat. I'm also happy. Uh, well, this and the next game we're going to talk about, uh, PSVR is getting some some pretty solid support. Yeah, I mean, I said this, but PSX felt like half a PSVR convention. There was a lot of support coming for that, um, and even just there's like, I went on uh, the PSN store this morning, and it was like I searched for most recent last seven days, what's come out this year, uh, and they put up. A, there's a list. I would imagine for, that list was pretty short. Yeah, there's, there's yeah. one thing, and it's weird because you can't actually buy it, but it's that game Golem, which is coming oh, yeah. out. Yeah. I think oh, that also yeah. got a release date. I think it's in March. Yeah, it's in March. Oh, there we yeah. go. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's uh, on the six. We're getting Bravo team, which is also then, by Supermassive. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. yeah, the Until Dawn team. Uh, how many then, how many teams is that that company? I have? think I think they I think the Until Dawn team was very big, and then I think they split it up into a bunch of micro teams yeah. for Inpatient, for Hidden Agenda, for Russia Blood, and for this. Yeah, well, it's got to be so smart if they're sharing assets too. Totally. If yeah. Like, oh, don't make a gun. Well, those five games definitely times, have a, just... a, a definitive look. Like the Supermassive game looks like a Supermassive yeah. game. Yeah. Mm. You know, so. And this one's not spooky. This is uh, more just. 
I mean, as you can tell by Bravo team, it's just men shooting. Them yeah, men shooting can hey, be pretty spooky. That could be spooky, spooky sometimes yeah. too. Oh yeah, nothing spookier yeah, than war. Of spooks in that. No, there's uh, haunted houses. Yeah, <laughs> going to go in and shoot. I didn't the ghost think about. I didn't think about haunted. Houses. Uh, uh, what about haunted houses when men shoot each other? Yeah, they have those. How well, that's that's called laser tag. <laughs> anyway, uh, yes. So on the 13th of March, we're getting Golem, which is that. Um, other PSVR game where you yeah, control it's one a big Mario O'Donnell's team. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, that's a ton of behind Halo. Yeah. A ton Jamie of former Wismer. Jamie Greesmer, a ton of former, yeah. uh, yeah. Halo talent. And this was, I think Ryan was saying, uh, Zach, you did the IGN first for this. Yeah. I think March it's the of earliest, 2016. the earliest IGN first we may have done for a game. So two years <laughs> before the game came out, yep, except Lord. for a scale bound, which never came out. Uh, and Rip. then also that day we're getting the devil may cry collection, which yes. is, which one is how many? It's, uh, uh one, two and three. All right. Um, but then we have a news item later on that this might be signaling uh, some more news for Devil May Cry. I was going to say, I think this definitely means we get a new Devil May Cry game this year. Or announced cool. at least. Didn't, uh, they do, didn't they do an HD collection for Devil May Cry? Yes, they Or did. last gen. For yeah. last gen. Yeah. For PS3? Okay. Uh, on the 20th of March, we're getting Yakuza 6. I'm so excited about this game. Um, you like Yakuza? <laughs> I, I know. What? Um, if you told me this a year ago that I would be this excited about this game, I'd be like, eh, I don't know about that. Huh. I'm really Oops. excited for this one. because Everything you've said about Yakuza has been awesome sounding. It all was one of those, like, I'm going to wait until there's too many games. I'm going to wait until six, like the proper sequel comes yep. out. If you are, six. if you've been holding off on Yakuza, I feel like this is a pretty safe bet because it's going to be made for the PS4 from the ground up. Uh, People sure love Zero this year or last year, I guess. I saw yeah. a clip from yeah. I think it was a Zero Kiwami where like a guy a wall falls down and it turns out there's a set with all these men wearing diapers and like the woman is like the mother and it's like this weird sexual thing that he walks into of like a bunch of like salary men wearing diapers who Sounds are like, like some finding stuff. like sexual pleasure in like the, in in acting like a baby like around. I a don't remember mistress. that part, but I, I watched the clip. And I'm like, happened, man, yeah. I don't know what these games are about. It's a lot of stuff in those games. <laughs> that yes. seems memorable. Yeah, yeah, uh, a lot of. <laughs> side quests there too I, I didn't i never finished the this whole side quest of the very horny man who likes to have sex a lot i don't remember what yeah, he dresses he dresses uh, up as a baby a his name game. is called uh, mr libido is that the guy's name? i think it's yeah or you, something I, like that i don't know if you're joking you're yeah, you talking about in yakuza zero yeah yeah, 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 yeah. i didn't I, I was too busy Yo, trying to, are you talking about henry horndog <laughs> yeah <laughs> hardcore henry if you will um all right on the 23rd uh, i was gonna make a funny joke but i'd have to swear so no, no cussing right. no cussing <laughs> brian's not here we don't have to cuss um on the 23rd, we're getting A Way Out, uh, the uh, Yosef Forrest game from uh, man? EA. I'm very curious to see how this actually actually handles when it comes out, because I feel like we've seen this thing so far over the past couple of years where uh, there's like an EA indie darling that gets announced, and then it just gets a very long tail release behind it. And then when it finally comes out, people are like, it was okay. I mean, talking specifically about like Unraveled. Unraveled yeah, being Unraveled a good example. Faye, which Faye. is... Current, Current, that's still yes. not Faye yeah. is supposed to come out in the first quarter I too. Mean, but Faye looks know. amazing to me, but yeah. a way out a little less so. Like I, I like the concept a lot, but love the concept. I don't know that it will be the Hitman esque thing that it wants to be because that's so difficult to do. Yeah, I don't think I want to be Hitman. Yeah, I don't think. Well, they're like, oh, there are so many different ways for you to escape. Like you pick up this thing and then this thing. I happens. think it's more choose What's your that voice you're doing? What's that? Yeah, who, what is, is that, that Joe? Is that not how he sounds? I don't think so. No, I've, ta I've spoken to him a couple of times. Something <laughs> about the Oscars. Good <laughs> impression. You, sound, yeah, thank you, you sound like the announcer at the video game awards. You yeah. don't sound like the man. Was, was that not him? Yeah. <laughs> Jeff Keighley, next. right? I really, World exclusive. I really love that because uh, this game is all meant to be played in co-op and then if you buy a copy, you get a token for a second copy. So oh, that's you buy, cool. Yeah, you buy a copy and then you give it to your pal that you want to play with. Yeah. It's, like or your it's like Friendship Rings, the game. It is like Friendship. Yeah. Promise Rings, the game. Yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, also out that day is Nino Kuni 2. Woo. Nino Nino. Uh, Revenant Kingdom? That's right. Yeah. yeah the Revenant. Um, yeah, I'm I'm very curious about this because I, I really like the first one on the account of it being such a like a Pokemon kind yeah, of game. Yeah, I love Yeah. So this, this one is, is not this one is so much less of a Pokemon game, uh fewer of a Pokemon game. But uh it still looks awesome. Like I loved the first game. Uh I am a little bit concerned about I was talking to Justin uh Davis earlier today about I don't know that I have the time to play JRPGs anymore. Like it's, yeah. I don't know that I have the time to commit 60 hours to any one game. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, or, or I have to pick and choose the games that I'm going to do that for because I'm 60 hours into 
Persona Five right now, and I love it. You're half, but it's like there. exactly. That's why I've only put in seven hours. hours. It's game. terrifying. Like, it, yeah. Like, so it makes you wonder. Um, we see these like the kind of the updated versions of, of Final Fantasy games that got put out on on you know PS4 and iPhone, and they have like the avoid random encounters. They basically have easy mode. They have cheats yeah. built into them, and. Will we ever see that with like full releases, like or like new games? Yeah, look for that when Revenant Kingdom comes to your iPhone in 2020. I mean, in Nia, if you play, I think it's any difficulty actually. There's a button that uh, is called Auto Chips, and it means that the game plays itself. Yeah, but I mean, you don't actually have to engage in the combat. You automatically dodge. Like that's for people who don't want to do that. And I used it twice in encounters where they were so button mashy that my finger was starting to mm. hurt. So I was like, Auto Chips for a second, recover, and then go back. Easy, yeah. so I could eat hummus. I mean, it's. <laughs> That's an option. Yeah, for auto chips. This is Marty thing I've ever yeah. heard. No, it's great because then two two B starts fight two B and nine S start fighting the robos, and I'm just there noshing on some hummus. There you go. All right. <laughs> there I was eating a pickle sandwich. <laughs> no, you have the toast and the pickle. There on the I side. was. Me and my good friends smoked gouda. <laughs> oh, uh, are you kidding? <laughs> No, that's what you no. sound like. Yeah, uh, um, great. No, I mean, that sounds like a stupid complaint, but like, seriously, these are, games are like massive, massive time sinks. And like, I don't know. I feel like most people play them for the story and for like yeah, and character customization. My and, thing is there's, you know. there's, there's something to be said about uh, when you play a game over the course of several months. Like I'm, I'm, like I said, 60 hours into Persona 5 and I'm getting to a point now where like I've been texting Marty and Andrew about like updates or where I'm at in the game. And it's weird for me to say that to them because they finished that game in April. You know what I mean? And so it's like you get to a point where- Andrew finished it three times. Yeah, where you're talking about a game- like Doesn't sleep. We we did this with Bloodborne too, where I went back and finished Bloodborne at the end of the year and then people were like, why are you talking to me about this right now? Like (laughs) I beat beat that game so long ago. Why are we talking about this? So (laughs) I had a friend who started playing The Witness and he was asking me about uh, like- How does this thing- this thing work? And I was like, I don't remember anything about that. Yeah, no like, way. Like, I remember getting through the game, and then I had like a, a those panic weird triangle attack. puzzles. I don't remember how weird. any of those rules work. Yeah. I put it on iPad. So over over break, I played Goragoa, which is yeah. a fantastic yeah. puzzle game on uh, Switch and iOS and PC. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was playing that, and it, it's got a lot of you know tricky tricky puzzles. You got to figure out. It's very kind of witness esque in, in some parts. And I would be stuck on something, and and my fiance Jen would be like, Oh, you need help? And I'd be like, Yeah, sure. And she'd pick it up, and she'd be like. I was like, it came out two weeks ago. How did you forget this already? Like, how did you? Not? I don't. I don't know how that just. Anyway, no. um, out on March twenty seventh is Far Cry. I put six. I meant five. You're optimistic. Yeah, Far Cry six. I think I'm, is I keep going out with Far Cry as well, though. Yeah. I keep being like four. No. five. Like I don't know anymore. Montana one. Just do the Assassin's Creed thing where you just chuck a word on it. Far Montana. Cry. Big Sky Country. Mm-hmm. All right, Far Cry America. Um, yeah. I'm excited about this game. Me too. I'm so stoked for this. I think they did the same thing with with Assassin's Creed where it's like, it's been just long enough since I played a Far Cry game that I'm totally on board for this. Yep. Uh, Was it Primal was the last one? That was last year? Mm, Year Yeah, the beginning of 2016. Yeah, yeah. Early last year? Yeah, damn. Feels like a- Early two years. Early two years. years, Oh, oh, what year is it? Wait, there wasn't a Far Cry game last year? No, I think no, Primal was, no, no, yeah. Primal was oh. 2016, yeah. Yeah, that was a yeah. minute ago. So yeah, was bring it on. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, of course, the game we're all most excited about as huge sportsman fans is the MLB The Show. All right, I put that on here because it is a first-party game, Sony San, or Sony San Diego. It's a first-party studio. Now, is this a baseball game with the horrifying nightmare faces glitch? No, was that uh, basketball? I think it was basketball. Was it basketball? NBA had that. I don't know anything about sports. But also, but, why is it called The Show? Is that a person, like a wrestler called The Show? No. Is that also in MLB? That's what sluggers refer to the the big games as. The show? I don't actually know. I, I, I like, honestly, I don't I, know. I follow I baseball. It's not a wrestler. Listen to me about anything that I say about sports ever. Yeah. Uh, and I just put this on here because also a they're like it's the only baseball game. Yeah, it doesn't have a baseball game. Uh, and b they're just good every year. Yeah, that's true. Year, so. We always we always are kind of surprised. I don't know why, but when the MLB the show reviews come in, yeah. it's like oh eight point five nine point oh. It's like oh well, okay, that must be a very good baseball. What show. is the show? <laughs> The game, the, the show, the enjoyment is the game. of the yeah, Jackson's King Kong. Just call it MLB. <laughs> uh, the, the show. The well, big, the show is an yeah. acronym. Oh, for what? Sports. The sexy hot. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now I want to play it. Now you explained it. Yeah, <laughs> let's play MLB, guys. All right. The sexy hot. Oh wow. <laughs> Yeah, so those are, there's a lot of games coming out in the first uh, first quarter of 2018. Yeah. I'm excited about it. I, I, honestly, I feel like I was kind of like, what's coming out this year? And you always kind of go to like the big stuff that's coming out down the way. Oh, we also might get, do we know we're going to get Red Dead? When is that coming? I mean, so that's the thing is, said, like, these are just the time? dated things. Yeah. So Faye might be in here, maybe one of the Sony first party games like Detroit or God of War. I mean, Dream. I feel like if that's Dream. the case, like they got to announce it right now. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, and it's uh, the only sort of major stuff that isn't coming out um to a Sony platform on this was like Sea of Thieves comes out in 
March. March. But like other than that, like none of the big Nintendo games are dated. Well, none of the big Nintendo games have names yet. Yeah, yeah it's like Yoshi, Yoshi. Kirby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Maybe right. a Pokemon. So uh, moving on here, um, Atlas announced a bunch of stuff at like yeah, Christmas yeah, Eve, yeah, and yeah, Andrew was you know he wrote it. He wrote it himself like a weird Scrooge. He's I guess it's the opposite. Oh, of a that's Scrooge. why he was working on Christmas Eve. Yeah, they seriously did announce all this on Christmas, right? Yeah, it, yeah. Uh, but there's there's three major things, and one is that the the Catherine PS4 remake, PS4 and Vita remake is real. It's called Full Body. They say it's like the wine, but I think it's like the naked. Because that game's all about the, sex. The naked, yeah. Yeah. I wanted to ask, they got a logo for this, mm-hmm. and it's like this weird like pink shape, and it says Catherine, full body, and I was like staring at it and trying to figure out what it's supposed panties. to be. Yeah, is panties. Is it panties? Yeah. yeah. It's Girl's like, butt. which, is it the butt? Yeah. yeah. I thought it was like the front. I was like, I don't know what's going on down there. No, it's, if no, you the watch the, if you watch the, the reveal trailer, at <laughs> the, the end. Doing that thing where you make the face of the camera, Alana? At the end, there's, this is a close up of the butt, and then it says Catherine, and then the body fades away, and it's just the look. Oh yeah, I yeah. didn't watch the trailer because I'm butt. at work, and it's that's <laughs> yeah. a rude game. Thank you for explaining female anatomy to me, you guys. I was very confused. Also, Women everybody has a butt. I wasn't yeah. about. It, it looked like you're right. It could yeah, be yeah, Vincent's right. butt. Like, oh, he was like a skinny sure. man. Yeah, uh, uh, he's pretty petite. You so. and I have been talking about whether or not they would make a re a, like whether or not they would remaster yeah. Catherine for PS4. I'm really we've, glad there. We've been like Let's kind of keeping this. our fingers crossed for years because that one of the first things that Marty and I bonded over was the fact that like we're one of nine people that ever played this game. <laughs> Did that so, just like freak out about it? Yeah, yeah. so uh, I'm super stoked and it I seems was, like they're, they're adding a host of yeah. stuff. Yeah. So I was super surprised that this isn't just like, oh, uh, you can play it on PS4 now. Like A, it's going to be uh, cross-save PS4 and Vita, which mm, is yeah. insane that in late so 2018, rad. possibly early 2019 in America, we're going to get a Vita game. Uh, uh, but it's um, Studio Zero is developing it, which is that core Persona team, yep. which has now moved on to Project Re Fantasy. Um, but clearly, Maybe. they're also doing this, and then uh, they're adding a third girl. So instead of it's Catherine with a C, Catherine with a K, and then a girl named uh, Ren. Ren. Uh-huh. Glad they stuck with that naming convention. It did. Well, that's to make everything confusing. They should have done Blathrin. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm really attracted to Blathrin. Everything but her name. <laughs> Just yeah, you that's do blonde Catherine. Name. Yeah, there's already I, a blonde Catherine. Well, this is um, Blathrin. Deal with it. Yeah, I hope new, they still have the uh, like percentage things where you could see what other people said like that was like one of my favorite things about it and i think that that will be different now when dating apps are way more prevalent like i just imagine that the moral answers that people come up with from those will be different now i will always like i was playing this with uh my ex we had just started dating and so it was so weird to Mm. be like i really hope you uh, you agree with me on this but i'm totally gonna cheat on this one (laughs) i hope this is gonna be fine (laughs) it was fine it was fine but uh yeah so they're adding i mean aside from clearly a third scenario by having a third choice with who this girl is but then also um the game has had a weird shelf life of a ton of uh competitive online speedrunning play and it's sort of like it it wasn't built into the game yeah uh and so they're actually adding like an online like Oh. Sort of multiplayer mode, which so, and then new puzzle mechanics and everything. So. Catherine is a game that was built without a competitive, like without a head-to-head mode that has shown up at Evo for the last five years. Yeah. And now they have one built in and like the whole fighting com- game community is like, well, this is nuts. This totally changes how we structure yeah. that part of our competition. Yeah. So yeah. that's really interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But I also love that Atlas saw that and was like, yeah, we could do that for you. Mm-hmm. Like, it's cool. Yeah. 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 Uh, the other Catherine stuff was uh, they announced that Persona Dancing Moon Knight, which is the Persona 3 dancing game, and Star Knight, which is the 5 dancing game, are coming out in May on uh, in Japan on PS4 and Vita. And then if you buy a super collector's edition, you also get a PS4 port of uh, Persona 4 dancing all night. Yes. So, uh, let me say, in terms of, instead of Andrew Goldfarb, mm-hmm. in his stead, I should say, uh, these games are awesome. Mm-hmm. I know that like, we have a tendency to kind of chuckle about Andrew's undying love for Persona. These Persona 4, or the Persona 4 Dancing All Night game on Vita is incredible. Mm-hmm. It's like a great rhythm game, but it's also a visual novel. Yeah. Like 70% of that game is about the story and about the characters. And that game is weird because it's like sort of this mashup, whereas these two games look to be very specific about five and three. three yeah. So it could be like a really cool continuation of mm-hmm. those stories. Also, they're all weird. Well, different clothes and they all look very cool the outfits are very exciting i love i love them all and then the last thing is persona 5 the animation is coming out in japan on uh in april it's starting in april uh it is going to be the anime series of persona 5 uh they have given uh, japan animation the japan animation uh they've given the main character that's japaname main character (laughs) is now canonically named ren amayami um 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 amamiya I'm a, I'm a Mia. Mia. I'm a Mia. Uh, and uh, I'm really worried about this because Andrew... Organa, you idiot! <laughs> Andrew is quite certain that Makoto is going to be the canonical girl that he goes for, and I don't like that at all. Hmm. Makoto, Makoto. All so right. the, the interesting thing about <laughs> these, right. like... Persona we got 3. a real sexually tar- charged when we talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Persona 3 and Persona yeah, 4. You, Alana? 
Yeah, you okay, guys, y'all do a stare. Persona 3 and Persona 4 animes, uh, anime are really cool because they tell the same story but yeah. take like liberties. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm really interested to see. It's almost like a director's cut of the yeah. games. Well, and so, it focuses on different like side characters that you have relationships yeah. with that you may have missed. Like maybe him and the gun store guy that like, ended up kissing one night. Persona 4 is on Hulu now. You can watch it on Hulu. Is it? Well, yeah. I've never, I just want to play Persona 5. All right, we're done. All right, cool. Anyway, uh, Fumito Ueda's new thing, uh, Gen Design, which is, this is, uh, this is the, uh, D'Amico guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and this is, this is like, <laughs> yep. You know, yeah. All right. Um, but yeah, teased an image. I love it when they, there's like a game coming out and we get an image. It's yeah. always a nice treat. It's a very uh, Japanese thing. Well, this one yeah. was like a tricky image too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's a very long, it's a very long image. And then it sort of had like a drip, it's darkness and then a drip coming from the top. And then when you get to the bottom, there's just like a beam of light shining on like a very like white pristine like lit up princess which I'm like all right this looks like eco and, and yeah that yeah. sort of stuff and then to the right hand side is a giant human looking scary ogre hand big, big hands I don't know what's going on with that hand I don't like it but mm. apparently in the source code it is the image is titled Beauty and the Beast 2018 which might like thematically I could totally see them making sort of a thing I mean that's kind of beauty I don't know it kind of sounds like a mix I mean, of eco and the last guardian yeah and Shadow of the yeah. so does that kind mean of that, similar themes there. Yeah. Does that the mean that they're going to announce it or show us that game in 2018? Because there's no way that a UA game is coming it's out. It's a tale of the oldest time, my friend. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Good to know. Well, yeah. I mean, that's another game to look forward to. You know, just to keep you waking we'll up dead by day then. after day. You never know. <laughs> uh, also, um, Devil May Cry. Um, Maybe getting a new thing? That's yeah. Cool. So, so uh, yeah. The, the, the one of the men behind Devil May Cry and Dragon Sogma, shout out to Dragon Sogma, <laughs> uh, tweeted out, uh, Happy New Year. I'm sorry that I cannot present the next project last year. The development of the project is now under climax, which I think means far along <laughs> and not an <laughs> orgasm. <laughs> I assume that means near the end. Yes. <laughs> I mean, yeah, orgasm. that's what... Yeah, I mean, some things climax really early. Did he mean crunch? I don't know. He said climax. That's a uh, really, I don't... And he says he's making a great game, and so he's very excited for it. So, so please expect it. So please expect it. All right. um, Dragon's Dogma. I totally think it's just going to be a Devil May Cry. I think you're probably right. I would, would also, also really like to get Dragon's Dogma online to come to the West, but that's a whole other fight. So, yeah. Dragon's Dogma. Take it up with the government. Dragon's, Dragon's Dogma. Dogma too. We have kind of speculated that there's a new Devil May Cry in the works yeah, for a while some, now. We've heard so. some rumbles. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine they get rid of new Dante, like it goes back to old Dante because yes. that was so divisive. I think it would be Dante and Virgil, probably. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, we got our PS Plus games for this month. Uh, Deus Ex, Mankind Divided, and Batman the Telltale series on PS4. Uh, those, are, those are two really solid. Yep. Like, Mankind Divided, oh, I feel yeah. like, was a really good game that no one played. That came out, at, yeah. didn't it come out in, like, early, or like early fall? Like yeah, August I think it was, like, an something? August game. Played about two hours of that game? Of yeah. 2016, yeah. That's a dense game. That's, like, yeah. a lot to It is, to and it's, uh, the... The design is really interesting in that you can kind of finish a side quest before you've been given the quest. Like you can conveniently go loot somewhere and get mm -hmm. this like sweet diamond that someone wants and then you give it to them. They're like, oh, you already did it. Like it's planned for you to be able to do things out of order. And I think that's really cool. It's neat. It doesn't block off any areas based on the quest aside from the main story. You yeah. can just kind of do everything. And Batman the Telltale series is kind of nuts because that like just came out, didn't it? Uh, like uh, I mean, this would be up. season one. I mean, yeah, yeah. The, the final episode. Whatever. Or is it, but this, well, no, it's already on season two. I know, but this is, this is, this are is we season talking one. About, this is season this one. Is season yeah, one. So, so the entire season one is going to be free. Yeah. Cool. Which is smart because season two is currently underway. Mm -hmm. That's that's very smart then. Yeah. Uh, and then if you're still playing um, PS3, we got Sacred 3. The hell is that? Uh, I've played a lot of Sacred in my time. Uh <laughs> What is it? Very hack and slashy type thing. You like go between different environments and you have to get to the end. And it's it's almost like a gauntlet kind of. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know what you're talking I was thinking like Very Risen. Very potty based. I was thinking of that pirate game. You know what I'm talking about? Not quite like Risen. I know yeah. the pirate game you're referring to. No, it's more, uh -huh. like, more like gauntlet. Um, and I, I like those games, but they're also just like a giant time sink. So. I just don't play it. Don't just play something else. And then, I like uh, Sacred Things. Yeah, and then on, also on PS3, The Book of Unwritten Tales 2. Uh, meanwhile, if you are a PS4 or PS Vita player, Psychopath Mandatory Happiness is coming out for Ooh, both of those things. A good title. Uh, Uncanny Valley is coming to PS Vita and PS4. Uh, is that the one little... God, I think I played a bunch of this. It's like a weird little kind of side-scroller adventure game, or not adventure game, but like you, it's you, it's very very surreal, almost survival horror-ish. Oh, I don't know. No, I, I might don't be know, but I, I know people like it. Yeah, but well, I don't know much it's about. on Vita and PS4, and it's free this month. And then finally for PSVR, uh, Star Blood Arena is coming out. That's available January second through March sixth, which mm -hmm. is really good because this is a multiplayer game, and it means that you need to play with other people. So if it's free for everybody who has a PSVR headset, then great. That means everyone can play together, and I it's am fine. Totally and good expecting and in 2018 there is going to be a free PSVR. 
VR game every month. I would hope so. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, on that on that note, I wanted to uh, do a quick shout out. Uh, Eric Smith in our Facebook group asked, um, I just picked up a VR, PSVR over the holidays. Can you and Brian, who's not here, talk about your favorite games and must-buys for the platform? Uh, I get this question a lot, so like really quick, I just wanted to give uh, kind of shout outs to uh, Eagle Flight, Super Hot VR. Super. Uh, <laughs> super it's a requirement. <laughs> uh, Nog. And I think Batman are all like pretty good, like totally. kind of cross section yeah. of what you can do with that. Uh, more recently, I picked up Accounting Plus, which is the game from uh, Justin Roiland, Justin Justin Roiland, Roiland yeah. and William yeah. Pugh, who made the Stanley Parable. Cross, cross, um, cross. This game is awesome. It's super. It's super short and weird. It's like a. It's it works incredibly well, and it's it's funny because it has the most rough around the edges, uh, like weird improv comedy voice acting I've ever heard in a game. But all of all of it works. Like, it's not one of those games that's like, hey, it's kind of janky, but you'll have fun Is with it. Is it like Job Simulator? Uh, it's a little bit like Job Simulator. I'd say it feels more like an old point-and-click adventure game, but oh, you're cool. in VR. Mm -hmm. cool. uh, it's one of the funniest games I've ever played. They they made this game because they won't be able to play it. I think it's like 10 bucks now. Uh, they're probably going to just try to get it out there. It's I mean, totally it's, one it's of those got, things. If you like the humor of Rick and Morty, you're going to like this. It's got the PlayStation Plus logo in the logo, so it'll probably show up out there at some <laughs> point, I feel like. Uh, also free, if you're on a budget, is Rec Room. This game is really important because it is probably the biggest uh, cross-platform VR game out there. Uh, this is out for, it's in like kind of loose beta on, on PSVR, but you're connecting with people who are on Oculus and Vive. Oh, and interesting. I think they're trying to even open up to other stuff, but uh, I jumped into this and it, it's very like, kind of feels like a cross between uh like a kind of Wii Sports type of thing but also a chat room hmm. and it was very strange to be in this environment they're like all right we're going through a tutorial here let's pair you up with somebody and this person like started talking to me and I was like <laughs> are you a real I've seen person? a lot of people on the internet at the moment talking about something that's just called VR chat yeah. I don't know what it is, though. I need to look that up. I feel like that's not, that doesn't exist on PSVR yet, but right. it's basically, I love the idea, and we're finally reaching that point of this sort of, uh, you know, snow crash, William Gibson, uh, Matrix-y, like, here, yeah. you have a physical component in this virtual world, uh, and people are getting weird with, with mods and stuff, and I feel like uh, Rec Room is definitely the, the closest thing that we have to that on PSVR so far. Right. I kind of want to try to make a friend on there. I think I want to hop on there and just start talking to strangers. That'd be nice. Uh, it's really weird to do it in my house though, because uh, I'm I don't I have like my VR in my living room, and I had the, the mic on, and I there were like people in the other room talking, and I was just very scared of them just talking and people in this in this strangers on the internet just overhearing because right. in a real yeah. in a regular chat room where you're typing. Nobody can hear what's going on behind you, you know? Yeah. But to like have like information from inside your house leak into cyberspace yeah. is interesting. Yeah. I wonder if VR chat rooms or social spaces will end up changing the way microphones work. Like will will the technology or the hardware rather have to adapt to that software? Like that's it's super kinda, interesting. I kinda hope they tweak it a little bit, but um I do want to screw around with that more. It's it's really it's really weird. You have like a whole dormitory and you and this is this social space where you can kind of mill around and talk to people and it's it's just weird because, you know, think like an MMO chat or like, you know, kind of hub where people are just like spouting random stuff off. It's like that, but people are just talking to you, you know, and I, can't, I walked in and there were, <laughs> there were people tickling someone. Like there was a person who was on the floor, like rolling around and these people were like, and it's all like these weird, I was asking how like, quick this has become a sex thing. And it's you, you absolutely, it. no, I had some, I had some foul things said to me, <laughs> but the way you tell people Shocking. to go away and leave you alone is you hold your hand up and make them talk to the hand. You hold your hand there and you just block people. Oh, no way. Yeah. So it just shuts them off. That's a good yep. system. That's and cool. you you make friends by shaking hands with them. Mm. It's really, it's really that cool. That is cool. Like, and it's free. So if you got PSVR, jump, it, jump on it and check it out. Make uh, friends with Max. Yeah. Try to, let's try to have like a weird, <laughs> weird stranger you encounter. You can tickle each other. <laughs> uh, and then there's another game called Sports Bar VR, Sports Bar VR 2.0, uh, which is exactly what it sounds like. It is a sports bar in virtual reality. Uh, it is I think unnecessarily difficult to control the way you like turn around is just very, you have to like grab the universe around you and like twist it like this. Mm. Oh, which so it's is like weird. you're a God, <laughs> but you can also spawn, you can spawn like Nerf guns and bottles. So you can just be like standing there in the middle of this bar and you just like some weird drunk God, just summon beer bottles to fall from the sky. And it's like, tsh, 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 tsh. that's cool. And yeah. And there's just Do these you watch sports. No, you play like ski ball and darts. Are there and other air people? Oh, is that stuff. the one that has pool? It's pool. It's really, it's, it's hard to figure out. You feel, it yeah, feels it very bad, yeah. but yeah, um, it's there. I just, I kind of love these like weird social spaces. I'm very happy. That's the direction VR is going because if Ooh. it comes down to some kind of like bizarre Wii sports chat roulette setup. <laughs> I mean, I absolutely totally think board. social spaces are like one of the coolest things about VR. 
uh, like werewolves was a really, really cool VR mm-hmm. experience. And that there's these people that I didn't know that I just knew their usernames of that by the end of playing with the same people for an hour, like I knew them. And I, yeah. I recognized our avatars and every game it would switch and I'd be like, wait a minute, that's not what you look like. It's just like, it, it's so much fun. You actually feel like you're making friends. No, I think that it, there's a lot of a lot of people. I mean, that's why Facebook bought Oculus because yeah. they want to do social stuff, not because they want to make you know first person shooters in VR. I mean, it's going to be like a, the the fact that you have like a physical, you know, thing in this. It's also because if you put ads inside of an Oculus headset, you can't click away, so it's got a lot of marketing power. But Stare you know, at me and let me tell you be about like, Look the at this savings for three that I have in store. Yeah, <laughs> Alana. Christian singles in your area, please. I get that a lot. Yeah. yeah. Farmers only? Yeah. Oh, dang. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, um, real quick, we had a, a, a fun question from Morgan Van in the Facebook group. Uh, I'm teaching myself lock picking as a new skill for the new year. Uh, by the way, I hate video games for making that seem so easy. It's very hard. Uh, what <laughs> video game skill would you like to learn and why? Flight. Power of flight. <laughs> <laughs> Power of video game flight. Just, just make my commute a lot shorter. I'd like the ability to just add charisma points. Like you can oh, just oh. like on a certain day, like match okay. your skills and be like, today I want plus 10 charisma and the ability to like have a percentage based on how much something will work. Like, yeah, be, you know, 95% like, chance that you'll bother. It's either like Marty said alcohol or it's like weird pickup artist stuff that you probably shouldn't be doing. Oh, so gross. just, yeah. You, know uh, you can get one of those big old hats though. That'd be good. Yeah, okay. a big, big old hat. hat. Yeah, like the pickup artists, the, all they they all wear those big hats. <laughs> what? Those big hats. Welcome hats. to the magician's yeah. ballroom. Yeah. Today we will make love. I mean, can I use? I'm. I want to learn to play guitar this year. Can that be an answer? People That's in video, not a video games game play thing. guitar. Yeah, guitar hero. Guitar hero. Yeah. That That's count not playing guitar. I'm yeah. making it count. All right. What's another one? Rocksmith. 2018. Making it count. Making it count. Uh, I don't know. Knife throwing would be pretty cool. There are places cool. nearby that you can do axe throwing. I was thinking about and organizing a thing. Oh, I definitely <laughs> want to go axe throwing. the side of my house. Don't Wait, throw it at your house. I got a fence too. I can do whatever I want. It's my house. What video game skill do you want, Marty? I don't. I don't know. You want to be able to date on? No, I think if I knew on in real life, I wouldn't want to date her. Nah, oh. probably Why? Because she's in high school, you weird old man. <laughs> yes, I just said I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't think she's like. No, I don't, we'll get, get into it later. But. All right. <laughs> Um, <laughs> taking this topic offline. All right. Uh, and then Scotty, I'll see you in the VR. <laughs> finally, to close this out, uh, for 2018, the possibility of PS5 announced this year. Maybe. Three. Absolutely. Two, nah. No. <laughs> think gonna be, I think it's going to be mentioned this year. I don't think it's going to be announced. I, mean, I don't think year. it's going to be revealed. Do you think they're I think they're some, going to mention it at E3. What do you they're think gonna they'll call some, it? They're going to have some stupid Matrix sounding like fake name. Where it's yeah. Gonna, oh, Project, Project Infinity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Project Trinity. Project Matrix. Uh, I do think it's going to come out next fall. Next fall? I don't think it's going to come out next year. Yeah, I think they're going to start talking. No. no, I think they're going to start talking about it next year. <laughs> right. I think it's coming next fall. Everyone else thinks I'm insane, but that'll be six years. That's a long time. No, you're yeah, right. that is true. Well, I, we are constantly wrong about everything, so who knows? Remember that time that you said you need a mug? Hey, plans are in works. Yeah, you've been saying right. that, that since months. E3. Plans are actually in One, works. Two, uh-huh. three months. No. Damn it! All right. <laughs> I said no again. <laughs> anyway, we're going to wrap things up. This was the first episode of Beyond of 2018. Yeah. We'll have lots more of them on the way. Uh, like 50 or so? I think maybe, or so. Reckon? Let's yeah. Just call it, just, yeah, sure. Let's call it just an even 48. A, a baker's dozen. <laughs> yes, a baker's dozen. Anyway, uh, you can find us all on Twitter. I'm Max Scova, Alana's Charles Alanazard. Zach... Zach Ryan. Ryan. Zach Ryan. What does D stand for? Daniel. That's my middle name. I did not know that. Yeah. I so just your name assumed is that Zach you Daniels. just really like D. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Give me a bottle of Zach. <laughs> oh, Ziski, my favorite. Uh, and Marty is McBiggity with two G's and two T's. Yes. Uh, yeah, and thank you all for listening. Uh, if you haven't already, head over to the Facebook group and make some friends. Uh, you know, it's a weird, crappy time of year. A lot of people get down because it's cold out and it rains or it's dark or you're sad or whatever. There's no more Christmas presents to look forward to. <laughs> yeah, so go to facebook.com slash group slash podcast beyond and head over to the YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash IGN beyond and subscribe for more wacky goodness today. Pound that like button. Just get One, it a lot. One, two, three. Pound. Yes. Oh. <laughs>